In terms of uh, men and women, the differences in terms of orgasm, yeah. is it is it different oh, in the brain pathways? You, yeah, that's 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 something that we're studying right now because we've done we've done um, uh, analyzed brain activity in, uh, during orgasm in women, mm -hmm. and we've done the same thing uh, brain activity during orgasm in men, mm -hmm. and uh, so we've done both sets. And just eyeballing it, uh, what it looks like uh, during orgasm, the similarities in brain regions activated are uh, almost the same. Mm -hmm. There's, there's uh, the the similarities are much greater than any differences. The one big difference that we see is after orgasm, when uh, uh, or at the end of orgasm, the activity goes way down in men, but it stays up in women. Mm -hmm. And that's probably because women ha can have multiple orgasms, and it's very difficult for men to have multiple orgasms. Yeah. Like, we can under some circumstances, mm -hmm. um, you know, high arousal. Uh, but typically, it's, you know, it's over after the first orgasm for men, but women can, can go on. So that's the big difference. That it go the activity goes way down in men, but it doesn't go way down in women. It can continue. And most of these studies are done with self stimulation, right? So we've done yeah, we but we've done some partner stimulation. You have, and okay. we've looked at the difference, and we don't see any difference. Um, in of course, this is you know this is a in the scanner. It's not a it's not a very <laughs> romantic situation. The partner is standing outside the scanner, and stimulating the the woman's clitoris. Okay. We haven't done partner uh, woman stimulating men, but we've done uh, the male partner stimulating the woman. Um, so that's how we do that study. And now what we're there, there are ways, there are ele electronic ways of doing. It's called conjunction analysis and difference analysis, where you can take the male set and the female set of data, and say what's similar about it, and just focus on the. On the exact similarities mm -hmm. that's the conjunction analysis yeah and on the other hand we you can analyze what's you subtract one from the other what's different mm -hmm. so you can get a difference we can figure out exactly what what's different about them uh, and also exactly what is similar about it so we're doing that right now we're in, in that process yeah it's <clears throat> that's interesting because one there's um there's a clear ejaculation with men where we don't always see that with women and that, and I wonder if that plays a role. And two, there was a recent study where they saw that you know when you have um, ejaculation from masturbation versus orga versus partnered sex, that the prolactin level um, is significantly higher when it's with partnered sex. So I wonder if there's a similar corollary in in brain activity. Well, I mean, the the uh, mechanism for prolactin uh, release is a depletion of dopamine in the brain. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've shown, that's another region that we've, we've found uh, in our measurement of orgasm, another, another pair of regions uh, that is highly activated at orgasm <clears throat> is the dopamine pathway. The origin where the, where the nerve cells originate in a region called the, the midbrain, mm -hmm. and it projects to a region called the nucleus accumbens in the in the forebrain, mm -hmm. and uh, those neurons uh, produce dopamine and they release it into the nucleus accumbens at orgasm, and um, dopamine is also known to endocrinologists as the prolactin inhibitory factor. Mm -hmm. PIF mm -hmm. because so since prolactin is released um, during orgasm it's most likely because the, the dopamine is re, is, is uh, released yeah at orgasm and it's depleted so there's no inhibition of prolactin so the prolactin goes up so it may be if the prolactin goes up higher after partner sex it may be that the partner sex activates the dopamine pathway more, depletes the dopamine more because the orgasm is more intense, and that's why the prolactin goes up more. Yeah. Do you think there's a difference in terms of 
orgasm and ejaculation in the brain? Like if you have an orgasm without an ejaculation. The interesting thing about ejaculation is that in order to eja in order to trigger the ejaculatory mechanism, the ejaculatory mechanism is a high threshold mechanism. And what me what that means is that it takes intense stimulation, intense neuron stimulation to trigger ejaculation it has a very high threshold of activation. So what that means is that the brain activity has to uh, build up to a high intensity that's sufficient to trigger that sudden ejaculation. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is a mechanism that um, requires, in, in order to get a high intensity of stimulation, it needs a high growing intensity of inhibition mm -hmm. to prevent the high intensity of of uh, excitation from getting too averse and getting painful. Yeah. So you so there's a buildup where the the inhib and we know this and mm -hmm. we see that that the the inhibition is building up, enabling the uh, the excitation to each to to reach a very high intensity, which is sufficient to trigger. It's sort of like the protective reflex. It has to reach a certain intensity in order to trigger it's it's another it's like an extension of the protective reflex which is a typical spinal reflex a common spinal reflex protective reflex mm -hmm. it's an extension into the brain yeah. of the protective reflex and it triggers the, the it's it's a, it's a way of getting enabling the brain to reach a high level of excitation that triggers this high threshold um, and it's just, it's the uh, activation of the sympathetic division of the autonomic system, which is uh, the the part that produces uh, adaptation to uh, stress. Yeah, increases heart rate, blood pressure, all that. So um, that's what triggers the ejaculation. So you can have an orgasm at at a lower intensity. And it's possible that women have an orgasm at a lower intensity that doesn't trigger the protective reflex. The, in the male, the ejaculation triggers this protective reflex that turns the whole system off. And maybe that's why they go into this so-called refractory period. But the women don't have that. Uh, they don't have that inhibition that develops to turn the system off. They don't get that high. Maybe they don't. Well, we don't they know. Can get, you can get very, very high but maybe it's it's in the men you you have to get a certain height to I mean you do have to get to a certain height to trigger that you know we don't walk we don't walk around ejaculating all the time <laughs> we have to get to a high level of excitation yeah. of a particular system in the brain that gets to the to the um, ejaculatory mechanism right um, and you know women do uh, women ejaculate. They do. This, you know, there's objective evidence that yep. the the fluid that women ejaculate. And that's a whole other issue. Yeah. Uh, they ejaculate the 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 chemical content of the uh, ejaculate in women is the same as in men. There's a, a, pro, a PSA, PSA. Mm -hmm. a prostatic uh, specific uh, antigen, a specific antigen, and also al um, acid phosphatase, mm -hmm. as opposed to the content of of urine. Which is uh, urea and creatinine. Mm -hmm. It's not in the. It's not in the Ejacu ejaculate. Yeah. So that's a way of different. That's been done. Yes. And it's clear that they that and and it's a relatively small volume. Right. In men and in women, the ejaculate. So women definitely ejaculate. Right. It's an interesting question as to whether, when women ejaculate, do they continue having multiple orgasms? Yeah, I don't know. Or is that the end? Yeah. Do they, does that the uh, you know? I just never occurred to me. Nobody <laughs> never asked. I don't know, but it's an interesting question. I mean, it's what you're raising, um, and you know, if any of your uh, 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 listeners or watchers um, know, you know, does it make a difference in women, in the same woman? Because some women can ejaculate sometimes and not other times right. at orgasm. Does it make a difference? Uh, if they ejaculate, do they still want to have multiple orgasms, or does that 
stop multiple orgasms, just I like wonder, in the men. Well, I think the other complicating factor is that the ejaculate volume is very small, but then there's also the squirting component. That's a whole other and, thing. But so I don't know that women would be able to differentiate themselves. Well, no, it's easy to it, it, it it's easy to differentiate because the the uh, the act, the true ejaculate is uh, one or two teaspoonfuls. Yeah. And it, it, it's a sticky fluid. Right. It's like whitish. As opposed to squirt. Now, squirting, there's a whole, I, I think the idea of squirting, there's, I feel it's a, there's a controversy there. There That's, is. There, there's a built-in controversy <laughs> that I don't think has been generally recognized. And I'm, I'm curious, I'm interested in maybe some of your listeners or watchers uh, have some uh, evidence about this. Um, and that is, I've spoken to a number of women, uh, healthcare providers, who insist that the fluid that they release, it does not smell like urine, it does not taste like urine, it's sweet, that's what they said. And they are sure that it's not urine. Yeah. They know what urine is, yep. and they, they can sometimes release urine, uh, during sexual stimulation, they say this is not urine. Right. And this is a study I'd like to do. And, you know, maybe if the women can contact you, let you know, <laughs> I'll do the study. We should do it. <laughs> we'll do it. Uh, we could do it collaboratively. <laughs> and uh, because, because it's possible, and, you know, I've heard not only that, but I, there was a uh, an Egyptian uh, obstetrician who told me that he's sure that it's not urine. Well, the there was the, the one study the that the one like most popular study, like a small study, but they looked at the the contents of urine, it's like the contents of squirting, and it's like dilute and clear, and it does. I mean, it does have some, but but where is it coming from? That volume of fluid, I well, guess that's the well, other thing. Uh, you know, some. I mean, one typical thing is it comes from the urethra, right? Um, and that that is very likely urine, but other women are not sure it comes from the urethra. And uh, you know, a long time ago, before there were fancy chemical assays, there was um, a bioassay in rats, a bioassay for estrogen. Mm -hmm. If you take an unknown substance, you don't know if it has estrogen in it. So what they did was they injected they injected it into rats. And they they weighed the uterus and the vagina, and they said that uh, it's a they called it a water imbibition. That the estrogen uh, has a unique effect of of uh, stimulating accumulation of of fluid in the vagina and and uterus, and they weighed that as the assay if a unknown substance increases the weight of the of the uterus and vagina yeah. in a rat that was the evidence of estrogen so it's very likely that that's what uh, happens in women in response to estrogen uh -huh. that it uh, it's called water imbibition it was called the estrogen water imbibition assay yeah meaning that the the uh, vagina and, and uterus drinks the water right so uh, maybe the same thing happens in women. And then since the uterus and the vagina can contract mm -hmm. during orgasm, yeah. maybe it squeezes the accumulated water out. That makes out. sense. That makes and that, sense. But nobody's done that. Yeah, you know, there's these questions I think people have. It's very difficult to get funding because what is not clinically relevant, right? Like it's. Well, <laughs> don't worry about the funding because I, I have I can I have the I have we can funding. do it. Okay. I have, I have spare funding. <laughs> All right. I'm willing to do that. You know, another way of doing collecting the the uh, the fluid to make sure that it's not urine is using a a a, 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 a menstrual cap. Yeah, yeah. Um, and collect the you fluid. know collect fluid if they if they if the women say that they have they squirt and they they're sure it's not urine. But that's the thing. They have to. They, they have, have to, to be sure. Themselves. They have to be sure because in the in the published papers, there are about uh, three or four published papers on right. squirting and the chemical content. They say you know it's dilly, but they don't. They don't select. They don't say. They just collect liquid. Right. And they don't. They don't 
say that this is this this sample comes from women who insist that this is not urine yeah and then analyze that fluid yeah because there was that one i think the more recent one is where they looked at bladder scans and they looked at like the amount of urine in the bladder and they measured so, and, and, you know it's so hard to say and then people like it's urine like it was like okay well yeah sick, sure you know? <laughs> of course you know it's uh, you know i'm sure that you know because uh there's so much um abdominal contraction muscle contraction and increasing pressure in the abdomen uh uh you know squeezing i mean this it's called the valsalva maneuver mm -hmm. you you know yeah. You, yeah. you squeeze and yeah. that's how you defecate and you, you could urinate that way increasing you in, you uh, tense the abdominal muscles it, it uh, puts pressure internally and it puts pressure on the bladder right so you squeeze the urine out yeah. So sure, during orgasm you do that, and so it can it, it can squeeze out urine. It's it's sure. perfectly natural. But women know but, generally. And women know, but but take the sample from women who say that this particular sample they have tested it. They know that it's not urine. Yeah. That's what I want to analyze. 